Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Levi and today we are doing another book haul. And so it's been quite a minute since I've done a book haul like for realsies. I think I haven't done one since 2023 started and it's currently June, which means that for the entirety of 2023, I have not done a book haul, which is crazy that it's June already. I have, I will say for this being six months, the majority of them come from book boxes. And I'll call that a win because I had a rule set up this year where I wasn't allowed to buy a book until I read three. So I have been pretty good at sticking with it other than like twice. And the exceptions to those rules were book subscription boxes that I was already subscribed to. And then the others are some books that I've bought, some books that I have received from publishers and other fun things. So we're gonna go into the books that I've bought recently. So I have this stack of classics right here. I'm in my classics era. I guess um, I'm in my moral superiority era. But the first one I picked up is Buy One Get One Half Off and that is The Uncensored Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Originally when this book came out, Oscar Wilde was a big queer man. And by big, I mean he was like 6'3". <laughs> he was so tall. When he submitted this book to the like publishing house or whatever for it to be published uh, over a hundred years ago, there was a ton of stuff taken out for explicitly homosexual content. And this puts it back in and, and all of the versions like the Barnes and Nobles classics, all of the classics you've seen, unless it says uncensored, it's usually the censored version, which means a lot of those passages have been taken out. The book is not actually this long. Um, a huge portion of this is an introduction and I've actually never read Dorian Gray and I'm glad it was buy one get one half off because the next book I picked up is also queer icon Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Leno. Lafanu. Wow I got that so wrong. The next one is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle and I've actually also never read this book but I remember being terrified of the movie as a child. I actually didn't know it was based off of a book until a couple years ago and I just saw this beautiful edition at Barnes & Noble and I wanted to pick it up. The next one's not a classic. Uh, I assume it will be one day but it's She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan and everybody and their mom has talked about this book including that one scene and I'm not gonna say it because I will be demonetized but I feel like everybody knows the scene that I'm talking about. And this is a sapphic, it's like part of the sapphic fantasy trilogy with the Jasmine Throne and uh, the Unbroken. So slowly working my way through that trilogy. Uh, they're not related, it's just like all of these sapphic books with orange covers. And I'm about to read the Jasmine Throne and I was just there and I figured why not pick up She Who Became the Sun because I've been wanting to read it for a while. The next one is Inferno by Dante, otherwise known as Dante's Inferno. But I've actually never read Dante's Inferno and I'm not gonna lie, the need to read it now is a little bit spurred on by Hosier's album, new album coming out called Unreal Unearth, which is inspired by Dante's Inferno and the Nine Layers of Hell. And then the last one is absolutely nobody's gonna be surprised. It's this edition of Jane Eyre. I was just at Barnes & Noble. This is back in February, I think. I was at Barnes & Noble just browsing. I wasn't planning on getting anything. And I saw this and look how fucking gorgeous, Gilded Edges, like beautiful, absolutely stunning. And I just saw it and it somehow ended up in my basket on my way out and I paid for it. Usually I only get Jane Eyre's on my birthday. For the past like three years, I've only gotten editions, editions of Jane Eyre on my birthday. But for whatever reason, this year has been full of so many beautiful Jane Eyre editions. I don't even know what I'm gonna do when it gets to my birthday and I have to get another one because it's a birthday tradition. Every year I get a copy of Jane Eyre. So I can't wait to read Jane Eyre in this edition. Like I need to do my reread for the year and it's just so beautiful. And not only that, the text is big. I love when the text is big because in classics, they love to make text small. I don't know why it, I don't know if it makes you seem smarter. All it does is it gives me a migraine. So I love it when text is big. I love it when text is big in classic editions. So the next stack are books that I got from publishers and just a few books that I bought in general. But most of these are books that I got from publishers, a few books that I bought, and uh, some manga that I got. So the first one I got all the way back on Valentine's Day because I like to do a readathon on Valentine's Day and that is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Okay, the next one is kind of a funny story because it was the end of my semester. I had been in my school's library eight hours a day, more than that more than that on most days, for about four days straight. So after those four days were up, I was like, okay, I need something. I need a little bit 
of something. And so I went to Barnes and Noble and I was like, oh, maybe I'll get Imogen, obviously, because I always get Becky Abertelli's books. And uh, I walked in, it's 6 p.m. I think it was like May 5th or something, I don't know. Um, and I see on a giant sign, like May 5th at 6 p.m., Becky Abertelli for uh, Imogen, obviously. And I was like, what the fuck? It's 6 p.m. It's May 5th, it's shit. And I just went up there and I, during the signing. So I met Becky Abertelli. Um, I got Imogen, obviously, um, which is her first book talking about bisexuality. And it's like straight baiting, like our main character Imogen thinks that she's straight and then she ends up like having this experience and she's like, wait a minute, what if I'm not straight? And what I really love about this book is that it takes place in college. So it's an older character. I don't want to say older because she's like 19, but it's an older character, like not 14, 15, um, figuring out her sexuality, which I really love. I got it signed and personalized and she drew a little cat and it was just so amazing meeting her, listening to her Q and A's. I loved it so much. Becky Abertelli, uh, one of my favorite authors of all time. Okay, if you hear incessant begging in the background of this video for the past like two days, my downstairs neighbors, I, j I don't know what's going on down there. Um, they are attempting to build the next David statue or something. I really don't know what's happening, but there's a lot of construction noises. I assume that the apartment downstairs is getting renovated. Please excuse it. I'm sorry. Okay, the next several books were all sent to me by Penguin Teen, so thank you so much to Penguin Teen. A couple months ago, I was invited to an event hosted by Penguin Teen with a couple of authors, and they gave everybody arcs and a uh, fun like tote bag, but it was just a, like a networking event to get to know these authors and get to know other bookish people in the area and the community. So the first First one is Ali Hazelwood's Check Inmate. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very nervous for this book ever since figuring out that it's based on real people. And you're putting them in funny little situations, not changing their name. Like if you go on AO3, you can find real fan fiction between real people. Also, these look like the people, by the way. Like this is what the girl looks like in real life. And this is what he looks like in real life. But in real life, she's 21 and he's 32. And when Allie Hazelwood started writing this, she was probably 20 or 19. And he would have been in his late 20s, which is creepy. That's, cre that's creepy. Um, so knowing this is based off of real people gives me a little bit of a moral conflict because even though like, yeah, everything's based off everything. Everybody gets an idea for everything from everything. I just don't know, man. I just don't know. It just freaks me out a little bit. Okay, the next one is like big for some reason. And that is House of Marion by JL. I actually hadn't heard of this book until I went to the event. But this is about a girl who it's kind of like a chosen one. Uh, it's a fantasy. It's about a girl who has like dark magic and she's not supposed to have dark magic. So she ends up running away from like the secret magic society and she has to get control over her powers before it like reveals itself basically and she gets in trouble for using dark magic so kind of like a chosen one fantasy it looks fun it looks interesting and i'm excited to give it a try this is the last book from the event and that is thieves gambit by kb on lewis so this is about a 17 year old girl named rosalind quest and she is like this master thief and she decides to enter the thieves gambit which is a game where you have to pull off a bunch of heists and basically if you win the game you get a wish for whatever you want. You, basically, you get whatever you want. And she wants the wish to save her mom. Killing is not out of the question. Like, violence is not out of the question. There are basically no rules other than win the game. Lie, cheat, steal, do whatever you have to do. And then she finds out that she knows other people in this game. And it turns into, like, an intense match for her. This is the one I'm most excited about. It just looks really fun and action-packed. KV on Lewis was so insanely sweet. And this book has actually already been optioned for a movie. All right, the next book Penguin also sent to me. And it's already out by now. And that is Threads That Bind by... Kika Hatsopolo. I, I can't speak Greek. I'm so sorry if I pr did not pronounce this right, but this is a Greek myth story actually written by a Greek, which I feel like we don't get very often. And this is about a girl who finds out she's part of the fates and she can like see the threads that bind people together. And she's trying to find her sister who has gone missing. And this just looks really good. I'm really obsessed with anything Greek myth related, obviously. So this is already out. So if you want to check it out, you can.
All right, the rest of the ones from the stack are all manga. The first two are from the same series, and that's The Ancient Magus Bride. If you've never heard me talk about this series before, I don't know how. I feel like I talk about it every five seconds. This is one of my favorite manga series of all time. It's still not completed, even though it's been going on for like 10 years. It's about a girl named Chise, and she is orphaned. Her father has abandoned her, her mother has killed herself, and she just like doesn't know where to go. And she finds out that she can see spirits that nobody else can see, and other people want to harness her power. Depending on the translation, she's either called a slave Vegas or a slave buggy. And it just means that she has like the power to see all this and she's almost like a, a siphon, but she doesn't know how to control her own power. So she decides to sell herself on the black market to these like mythical creatures. And the mythical creature named Elias ends up buying her and is like, I want to make you my wife. And she's like, wait, 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 what? And it's not that creepy. It turns out he's just like an introverted man and he doesn't know how to say friend and he just wants a friend. And so she ends up becoming his apprentice and they start to fall in love from there. And it's so cute and good. And I kind of want it to wrap up just so I can have like all of the completed volumes because it's been going on for so long, but I love it so much. Okay, and the next one after that is a completed series. So if you guys end up checking it out, you can read the whole thing. And that is Blue Flag. I bought the first two volumes of Blue Flag. So it's just like, a, I think this is like a show, shonen. I, to be totally honest, I don't really know the difference between shoujo and shonen. I think there's only four volumes, so I believe it's already completed, but it just looks so cute and the art style is adorable. So the next stack are all books that I got from subscription services. So this is going to be subscription services since the beginning of 2023. So there's going to be quite a few. I am subscribed to Fairy Loot, Adult and Young Adult, Book of the Month. And I was for three months subscribed to Unplugged, opened a horror only box called Twisted Retreat. So for three months, I decided to give them a trial run. Okay, so the first one is Seven Faceless Saints by MK Lobb. We have this beautiful cover, these beautiful sprayed edges. Um, and this foiling on the cover as well. This is a religious fantasy, not like I love Jesus, but rebelling against a certain religion. I don't really know much about it other than that. Okay, the next three are all from Twisted Retreat. The first one is The Alchemist's Wife by Polly Hall. This is about a man who starts getting, he's a taxidermist, obviously, and he starts mixing more and more creations until she doesn't know if he's gone too far. It has these beautiful sprayed edges. And my favorite part of the book is the foiled cover. Like, hello, this is absolutely gorgeous. Like, this is just absolutely gorgeous. The next one is Claw Heart Mountain by David Oppegaard. And this takes so many weird turns, but it's got a beautiful uh, sprayed edges. Also, awesome foiling and the cover is like matte it's so smooth and nice i love it and this is about friends who find a million dollars in a van and they're like should we take it should we not take it they're in like a remote mountain they're like okay well we found a million dollars like should we should we take it should we not take it it's in cash like in a van and they decide to take it without knowing that something else has laid claim to the money and that there's also a creature in the mountain which i would assume based on that is a bear and then the last book I got from Twisted Retreat was Legacy Witches by Cass K. And once again, just absolutely gorgeous naked hardback. And this is about a woman who is a witch and she moves back into her family's house and is like getting ready to clean up and sell it when she finds out that this house is haunted. And there's also a local coven and things are happening. Okay, the next two I actually managed to find on Pango Books for very cheap. So I'm happy about that. The first one is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. And I just kept seeing this everywhere. I think it's so gorgeous and I love the naked the naked hardback. The next one is also from Illumin Cray. I also found it for a really good price on Pango Books. And that is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. And this fantasy has been hyped to hell and back. It has again, beautiful sprayed edges. And what I love even more is I love the fully covered hardback naked hardback. I know some people aren't fans of these. I personally like them very much. I think they're beautiful. And this, I mean, kind of what it says on the cover. So this is about our main character, Kissin, and her job is to kill gods. All right, the rest of these are going to be from Fairy Loot. The first one is The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This is a, I would say this is more of a new adult. This is for their adult pick, but I would say this is more new adult than it is really like adult adult. It has this beautiful hardback 
And Fairy Loot has kind of been killing it with the edges because it has these beautiful edges also. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what this is about and I don't really wanna know. Um, and we have to speed this up because I'm going crazy. The next one was their YA pick for whatever month. And this is Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim. And this is stunning, like stun one of their most stunning editions. So we have these beautiful covers, these beautiful stenciled edges. And once you open it up, absolutely stunning hardback copy. And it wraps all the way around. And this is about the hidden desert city of Kalia. Don't know anything other than that. The next one is Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chashki. Also has beautiful sprayed edges and very beautiful foiling on the hardcover. And I've heard a lot about this. I've had friends who really liked it and friends who really didn't. So very interested to see what I will think. But this is about a man who's marrying into a woman's family and her past is not what she said it was. And we start diving into both his past and her past and how they connect, I think. And it's just, I've heard a lot of mixed opinions on this. The next one is Margie Fustin's Cruel Illusions, which was compared to Carval meets Buffy. When I tell you, I didn't need anything more because I have this thing called Buffy syndrome, where if a book or piece of media is compared in any way to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I will be reading it and or consuming in some kind of way. It's an illness, it's incurable. Unfortunately, I will have it until I die, but they have these beautiful wraparound sprayed edges. And I know some people don't like the character foiling on the cover. I do, I think it's nice. What I don't like is this woven, it does not feel good. It's like this, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like this woven texture to the hardbacks. I don't know why Fairy Loot uses that texture. I don't like it one bit. All right, the next one is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Fairy Loot knocked it out of the park. This is one of their adult picks. This is so stunning, the purple edges. And then also like the character art um, in the front is so stunning. I can't do a British accent, I'm sorry. And this, stunning. Once again, I've seen this described as a cozy fantasy, something that I'd like to get into this year. It might end up doing a vlog exploring. And this is obviously about Emily Wilde and she does her research with fairies and she ends up coming across her academic rival and they have to work together to get to their end goal. So this is like a rival to lovers. And I don't know what the obsession is for, I, th I think it's the tension. I don't like it, but I love academic rivalry. So, I mean, who am I to say I don't like it because the idea of academic rivalry is so good. This is City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. So this is about a girl named Ness and you become your nightmares in this world. So her sister has become a man-eating spider because she used to have nightmares about it. The city is being overrun by nightmares and Ness is trying to get her sister back and also like not become the next victim of the city. All right, the next one was an anticipated release for a lot of people. And that is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. And this is a get the game back together. We have one more heist to pull off story. So we have Amina Al-Sarafi. She's the captain of a pirate crew and she has done her last heist. She's out of it. She's whatever, but she's hired for a lot of money to do one more heist. So she gets the team back together. It is about her tales as the captain of this pirate crew and the heist that they have to pull off. It has these beautiful sprayed edges. Uh, it has a map, this beautiful, it's not fairy loot exclusive, but it has this gorgeous map at the beginning and for the hardback it just has i believe this is a compass this is either a compass or a constellation guide i'm not quite sure all right the next one is the curse of saints by kate drams so as spymaster to the queen aya's blood oath ensures she protects those she fights alongside including will the queen's enforcer and aya's bitter rival when rumors of dark magic rise in a nearby kingdom both are sent to investigate but when aya's power acts beyond her god given affinity she risks being turned into a weapon in a war she doesn't know how to win. The next one I'm actually really excited about, and that is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Fairy Loot did the stunning edition with these letters and just really pretty sprayed edges and um, this foiling on the hardcover. So the vibes that it was giving off. So I think this is going to be a mix of Your Name and The Lovely War by Julie Berry. Uh, very interested. Okay, and the last two from the stack, I still cannot believe that I have my hands on them. And that is Fairy Loot's edition of A Day of Fallen Night and Priory of the Orange Tree. Now, if you didn't watch my vlog from earlier this year, I read Priory of the Orange Tree. It took me two months. Illumicrate did these editions and they sold out within an hour of the initial sale. 
and I owe my friend my life for having an Illumicrate subscription and not wanting these books. And so they let me use it. So thank you. I owe you my life. These are beautiful. Let's go detail into what makes them so beautiful. So we have obviously these beautiful sprayed edges, a nice ribbon bookmark, and just absolutely stunning artwork on the front uh, end papers and the back end papers. And just look at the Nike. Look at the Nike cover. Holy crap. So Day of Fall and Night is kind of the same thing. We have this beautiful, beautiful sprayed edges, absolutely stunning artwork on the end pages and the next dragon in the saga. Action writing is not Miss Shannon's strong point. So if you're going in here for a lot of action, I would say don't do that. This is mostly a political fantasy. I actually really liked the politics in here and how well she set them up. I expected it to be more war based because there is an oncoming war. Out of all of the prior, I haven't read uh, Day of Fallen Night yet, but out of this whole book, it's like 800 pages long. Out of this whole book, I am not even kidding when I say this much is filled with war. That's it. That's the action scene. That's all I got. And the rest is all politics and following these four characters and figuring out what they're going to do when the war happens. So the East and the West have been separated for several hundred years and they're trying to connect them again. So it's about how to do that and the people you lose along the way, the friends you gain along the way, the and all of the politics of broaching like the two hemispheres back together. The last books I have to show are my book of the month picks. So let's just go ahead and get into those. This is definitely the most recent. I believe this is the May pick. Yeah, this is the May 2023 pick. And this is Taylor Adams, The Last Word. And this is about an author who stalks a reviewer, which is, is very topical because there's so much going on about authors and reviewer spaces right now and reviewers and author spaces. And this is about a woman named Emma and she reads a book and she leaves a bad review for the book because she didn't like it. And the reviewer, I'm sorry, the author ends up stalking her and like trying to attack her. The next one is Wayward by Amelia Hart. This is about a woman named Kate and she is fleeing London to a, a cottage she inherited from her great aunt and she finds something that goes back to the witch hunts of 1619 where a woman is on trial for the murder of a local farmer and then in 1942 violet is trapped in her family's crumbling estate uh as world war ii is happening if she's in london this is like towards the end of world war ii she is trying to find out the mystery of how her mother went insane and then died. The next one I'm really excited for and that is Kate Alice Marshall's What Lies in the Woods. This is Kate Alice Marshall's first adult horror and I am so excited to see what threshold she passes because she has written some of the most I would say true horror YA horror like multiple people say that her books are the scariest books that they've ever read. I have not read any personally I want to so bad. I am so excited that she came out with an adult horror because it just lets you explore so much more than YA. The next one is Age of Vice by Deepthi Kapoor. And I actually started reading this one and I just put it down because I didn't have like the bandwidth for it at the time, but it looks really interesting. This is set in India and uh, multiple people are found dead in New Delhi. Uh, it follows like this family and just like Indian politics. And I started reading it and the writing style was so captivating just from the second that I started reading it. So I am excited to get back into this like proper and actually read the rest. The next one is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. Have I read Ninth House? No, but like I have Ninth House from Book of the Month. So I decided to get the matching edition of Hellbent even though I haven't read either. Next one is just another thriller. It's The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. This is about seven adults who went through something traumatic as teens and they decide to meet up one more time to go over like what happened but one of them doesn't show they've been murdered and they are slowly being picked off one by one so we have to unravel the traumatic event that they went through and also what's happening to the survivors we are finally on the last book of this book haul thank you so much for sticking around and the last book is the writing retreat by julia bards and this has been getting a lot of hype i know a lot of people have read it and this is about a competition where you're all invited to a writing retreat like all these writers it's whoever has the best novel will receive a publishing contract and then people start getting picked off there's like cruel mind games and it just starts getting thriller vibes so i've heard mixed things about this one that is it for this ridiculously long book haul thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it 
And if you stuck around this long, I don't know, we could play an emoji game. Put like the little puppy emoji down in the comments below. I hope you guys found some things that were interesting to you. If you found any books yourself that you've hauled recently, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more from me, click that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and put them in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.